Last week on Believe Boot, we forgot to talk about how Sam said, I want Senator Uranus. And uh, it was Sadie Hawkins' dance. Puck and Kitty went together, and Glee was somehow okay with this. And Tina sang a song confessing her love for Blaine, who's gay. And that's what we missed on Glee Boot. Glee Boot. Yay! That actually explains a lot for this episode. <laughs> Because I forgot about the Tina thing from the last episode to this one. I don't know what I was thinking. I I thought for sure that they were going to revisit the Puck and Kitty plotline this episode. No, no, of course not. Because Glee never revisits any (laughs) plotline ever. So... Yeah, welcome back to the Glee Booth, the show where we get drunk and talk about rebooting Glee one episode at a time. I'm Cullen. Alyssa. Hannah will be here later. And we have two guests this week. We have recurring every season guest, Emily. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> and we have entrepreneur and friend from college, Aaron Helander. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Hello, welcome. <laughs> Thank Have you. a good part of it. <laughs> uh, there's a reason I invited them on for this episode because both of these friends love being naked. So I was like, perfect. The naked episode. Yeah, yeah, I was like, we could just. <laughs> uh, and so I asked Aaron if I could tell this story. Um, one of my favorite Aaron Helander stories is he was helping me move dorms in college and like I was cleaning something in the bathroom he's like I'm gonna be naked now and I'm like okay and I come around the corner and he's just like in a bed sheet or like a towel or something and like campus was it's dead it's a, it a comforter it's a comforter yeah, it's a big blanket. <laughs> yeah campus was dead when he decided this so I was like okay whatever and then we get in the elevator and it opens up and there's like an entire family moving in like, <laughs> parents, younger siblings, like everyone. And Aaron's like, I'm wearing clothes under this. And the dad is just like, sure you are. (laughs) One of my favorite memories too. Classic tale. (laughs) Oh man, orientation summer. When when Aaron and I watch this episode, he looks at me and he's like, you know what he's going to bring up? (laughs) The comforter thing. (laughs) He knows me. Very well. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Please explain this preference to me because I don't understand it. Oh, I I I was like, I hate pants. Like I hate I just just I'll let my body be (laughs) where it is. It's been the whole time. Both both Aaron and I are very comfortable, just like not. Yeah, I think growing up, yep, just being on the swim team and being 75% naked, 50% of my life, just makes sense not to want to wear a whole lot of clothes. Um, So even this past weekend, I went out to North House Dunes, uh, and of course, once it was nighttime, had to go swim in the lake naked. Nice. Aaron just likes to streamline all processes. (laughs) He's a very efficient man. (laughs) See, like, I feel like skinny dipping is on my bucket list. But I don't think that I like would do that on the regular. Yeah, it's fairly common. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's that's really it. It's just you know, just comfortable with being in my own skin, and don't really like wearing clothes, so it's just natural fit. Okay, well, you just have these rocking bods. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I share it with the world. <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron because we, we've asked Emily this question before but Aaron what is your journey with the show Glee have you watched it before have you not yeah so this is my first time ever seeing any episode it was pretty funny that you asked me to be on here because Emily and I when we met up to watch the episode it's like yeah you know even in high school I didn't watch any TV I had friends that would talk about Glee but I was not part of those conversations <laughs> uh, and then really don't have any experience with any TV series besides Gossip Girl. Uh, so didn't have a whole lot of He only watches though. TV when I make him watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so yeah. first 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 and only episode. First and only episode. I remember you watching Ugly Betty together too. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't watch as many, but yeah. still got a couple episodes in and House of Cards. <laughs> We're here for the drama. <laughs> uh so cool. And then you took the BuzzFeed quizzes? Sure did. Yeah, who's what? your blue boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, which which one do you want first? You want who I am or who my boyfriend is? Who you are. Okay. You want to guess? I mean, I would guess you, I would always have guessed you as a Sam or a Finn. Finn. Yep, I got drum roll. Finn. Okay. <laughs> I liked it because it said kind leader, bring people together, and that people are comfortable to reach out and uh, to help for me from me. Yeah. It feels uh, true. It feels it tracks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> And then my boyfriend, which is probably more exciting, is Blaine. Because he's charming and down for any adventure. Oh, We have the same Glee boyfriend. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode of Glee is me and Aaron singing that boy is mine. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so... This week we're talking. Oh, what are we drinking today? Yes. Um, Screwdrivers for Cullen and I because it's 9 a.m. here. Um, I've only been up for like a half hour. So <laughs> <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> I might be a little quiet to start off. And then, like, as I wake up, I will just like become my Turn normal off. self. And I don't know how to yeah. describe that. I'm too mango, tired. Mango White Claw because I have to go to a wedding later today that's in a barn and it's 90 degrees in Michigan and it's a cash bar. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to pregame a little while I get ready after this. <laughs> 90 degrees in a barn? Oh, it's a barn wedding, baby. Mm. <laughs> That's how yeah, it's bar wedding. Like I looked on the website and they're like, for two dollars per person, you can have popcorn all day and hay rides. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> Emily works in event planning. So if there's anyone here to judge your wedding, it is Emily. <laughs> Emily. They're like, um, we want this to be black tie optional. So like wear a floor length dress. Like also, like we could be using picnic tables. I was in like a barn. <laughs> no a floor length dress in a barn no oh, i'll take a picture for you guys i'll be i'll be <laughs> are you gonna have a cowboy hat on and boots <laughs> i should put on something some boots because i could probably heels probably seems like a bad option i've never thought that about route. yet no i'm just i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be present i'm gonna be physically in the space <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun but i'm sipping on a high school classic Arnold Palmer, Ooh. because a couple of weeks ago I drank too much and have no desire to drink alcohol anytime soon. <laughs> I feel Been that. There. Been there. <laughs> and guess yeah. what I did when I drank off, too much? Right, right, yep, took right my clothes Eric, off. You got, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Emily knows. <laughs> Thanks <Segs> nicely. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I also drank too much and I had a hangover that lasted like two and a half days. And then I realized that I was going through caffeine withdrawals at the same time that I drank too much. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no. Like, I'm wildly dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, today we're talking about season four, episode something, Naked, Um where a bunch of underage boys pose for a calendar. I really was unsure of what the message of this episode was supposed to be. I don't think Glee knows. I was like, is it body positivity or not? Because I'm getting several different uh, messages Depends on the storyline, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Depends on who you talk to. <laughs> So in college, at one point, we were making we it never finished we never finished it, but we were making a calendar for one of our coworkers, like one of our like real adult coworkers, our adult man coworker. 
<laughs> Technically, I don't know if he'd be considered a supervisor, but like definitely a older than us. <laughs> like a boss. Yeah. And so we're like, we're going to make David a calendar and like, it's going to be a sexy calendar. It wasn't like that, like steamy, but I was March because St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking of about uh, Russell being the vampire in October. <laughs> Yeah, and Emily was like his prey. I'm <laughs> just like being around the tree. <laughs> I think this is yeah. This is we we immediately thought of that. Justin being at the was, volleyball court. <laughs> there's somewhere deep inside an Oakland University computer is a picture of me spanking Justin Frank with a pool noodle. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's probably right next to the. The in case of emergency file where we had all the pictures of our boss drinking that we got from her Facebook page. So she could never get us in trouble. So those should still be in there somewhere too. We were very really deep. good at our jobs. <laughs> we were very mature people. Yeah. And, um, but you know, I think I think the episode did a fairly good job of talking about body positivity. Um, and I don't know really any of the characters' names, but the one uh, who didn't want to be in the calendar was also in a wheelchair. Eventually, Artie. being in the cal, yeah, Artie, um, yep. eventually agreed to be in there. And I think they had one where they had clothes on too to help them feel more comfortable, not being the only guy in there with clothes. Um, so I think that was pretty good. And I think was it Sam or someone yeah. talked to him and just like, yep, support you, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you don't no, want to be in, that's cool. Finn. Well, Sam also did that at the end of the yeah. episode. So. Sam learned that he was more than just his body. Yes. Which I, I yeah. liked that storyline. I think the really confusing one was probably the Rachel storyline. Yeah, that was very confusing <laughs> for me. The only thing I can think of that's like different sort of between these is that one is for a woman and one is for a man. So yeah, yeah. that's well, and one is like showing your breasts versus the guys are just showing off their bodies. So it's not like a private part per se. Um, so I feel like that could be pretty different. Like if the guys had to take their pants off for a picture, I feel like it'd be different. Weirder. Yes. <laughs> Definitely weirder. <laughs> but I also didn't understand, like they said it was just like a, a nude, but like for the top. But then when they were doing the actual shoot, I was like, is she actually like completely naked? I'm confused. We'll never know. She did not. Yeah, she, she did not. She did. We'll we'll find out later in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> she she did say stars express themselves by exposing themselves, though. I like that line. <laughs> Aaron wrote that one down. <laughs> sure did. Uh, so for our storylines, we have kind of like the Man of McKinley, like Finn, Artie, and Sam storyline. We have the Jarly, Jake and Marley storyline, the ship name that sounds like a Star Wars alien. <laughs> Um, and we have, uh, the Rachel stuff. So let's talk about like the calendar first. Um, so Finn is like, we need to raise $400 to get a bus to Indianapolis, which already calls the Paris of Indiana. <laughs> I laughed out loud. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, sounds right. <laughs> I mean, if any city in Indiana were to be the Paris, I suppose it's Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even, like, I can't even. I, I don't go good. to Indianapolis. I live in Indiana. I just skip it all together. Uh, and so they're like, I suppose a bake sale. And then Artie's like, that only works because Puck spiked the cupcakes. And then Tina is like, we should do a Men of McKinley calendar. We have all these sexy guys and people would love it. And Artie's like, how come only the guys have to do it? And Kitty is all like, because women drive the consumer economy. Those Twilight books are poop on paper. Um, and I'm like, oh, dig at Stephanie Meyer, our favorite Mormon <laughs> mom author. Um, Honestly though, like she's not wrong. <laughs> We didn't I'm, not, I'm not talking about Twilight being bad. I'm talking about women being consumers. Yes. <laughs> quite the resurgence. Yeah. They cover a song from Twilight later in the episode, too. Did they? Yeah. A Thousand Years was initially for, I think, the third Twilight movie. Oh, seriously? It was written for that? Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, so Finn's like, this is a great idea. What could go wrong? Um, and so then it, later on, like Finn is like pouring all the sugar in his coffee to try and drink it. Um, and then he's drinking his coffee and Sue is like, hello, peddler of teenage underage pornography and uh, insult to the very American institution of education by being still present at this school because he is not a teacher. He is just a volunteer. Um, I like him in the break room, though. I did forget. <laughs> <That's> just, yeah. <laughs> in the break room. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's like, you can suck a hot one because you are a hypocrite. Um, and I'm like, I mean, it is true. So we've seen so many booty shots of these underage cheerleaders throughout our seasons of the yeah, show. Yeah, I thought that he was talking that she had done something with the cheerleaders and I was proven wrong. <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it turns out that it's because Sue had posed for Penthouse. Um, and he was like, I'm going to find it and prove you a hypocrite. And she's like, no one can find that. Um, and so that's a plot line. A little centerfold <laughs> moment. Yeah. That was interesting. I think... Uh, I least liked the scene with Artie for that plot line. Oh yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, so then uh, Sam and Brittany are both called into the office because they got the highest and lowest scores on the SAT. The uh, teacher or the principal calls them teen, sexy teen imbeciles. Right. I don't understand why the principal is sexualizing his teenagers. I will but never I, understand this. I also would want him to be my principal. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's all so stupid. <laughs> Hannah is about to join us. us. Welcome. Maybe. Maybe. It's questionable. Things is the rock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I like that Whoa. little disclaimer. <laughs> Hello? Can you hear us, Hello? Anna? Yes. We, we, okay, okay. <laughs> Hello. That's exactly right. 20 minutes. <laughs> So, yeah, we were talking about the sexy teen imbeciles scene um, where uh, Sam is revealed to have gotten the lowest ACT or SAT scores at the school, a score routinely beaten by trained monkeys. And uh, yeah, is Brit that the lowest score you can get, like a 500? I have no idea. I don't know how they I score those. The SAT. <laughs> yeah, I took the ACT, but like, I'm pretty sure that like, you, if, as long as you fill out your name correctly, like you get like at least 500 points. <laughs> so that's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and then Brittany got the highest score and he's like, you obviously cheated. And she's like, no, I just filled an A for a while. And then I did B and then C uh -huh. and then D. Uh -huh. And then I used the dots to make to to, was it, to draw to make a penis. A penis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, she is incredibly lucky. That's what I got from the sea. Yeah. I'd rather be lucky than smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one thousand times yes. <laughs> and then uh, Sam is just like. Uh, he's like really disheartened and Brittany's like, it's okay, Sam, you have a great body. You could be like a personal trainer or a greeter at Abercrombie, a greeter at Abercrombie headquarters. headquarters. I, like, I like to think of a life where Abercrombie headquarters has greeters, shirtless greeters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be amazing. Like wherever their headquarters is, that people that are there like, like posing in rain or shine, but also just wearing like two low jeans. <laughs> um and so 
Sam is sad. And then uh, the next day, uh, Tina is like, Blaine, I need you to go shopping with me. Um, and he's all like, oh, sure. And then he gets distracted because Sam walks in shirtless in basically a bathing suit. Um, bathing suit and Uggs. <laughs> Because it's the middle of winter. This is like January. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, shout out like, to- I don't see anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I've seen that sort of get up. My brother was on the sim- swim team and that was normal. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's a normal swim team attire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and Sam- like, that's a <laughs> Sam is on the synchronized swimming team, as they reminded us. I forgot about that, yeah. I wonder if Nene Leakes is still the coach. Yeah, I was like, she's not even around anymore. Like, is she even there? We'll never know. (laughs) No, we'll never know. Aaron's like, yeah, I never plan on watching this show again. Sorry. (laughs) Literally, we'll never know. Um... So, uh, yeah, so then he's all like, oh, like Blaine is all mesmerized. And then he's like, what are you doing? It's January. And Sam's like, it's like, it's super hot outside. And like the sun. And then he's like, you're just jealous of my rock and bod. And Tina is all like, Blaine has a great body with a round perky behind the looks and baked to perfection by a master chef. <laughs> And Blaine not sense. like the before, because I totally forgot about <laughs> the vapor rub of it all. The yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. <laughs> that we, me and Hannah, have been waiting for that moment. <laughs> and it wasn't this episode, mm-hmm. and I was <laughs> I really disappointed. About, I forgot about all of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe I blocked it. <laughs> maybe maybe they were like, "Oh yeah, Tina, she doesn't get a lot of stories. What can we do?" Well, what other man in the club can she pine after? Yeah, <laughs> that's her job, just pining. The yeah, the oh. obviously <laughs> unavailable. <laughs> the more unavailable the better. <laughs> yeah, so uh which I also just really like blaming like Thank, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think in like a different context, that would be a fantastic compliment for a friend. But oh, she's yeah. with him, so. Yeah, it reminds me of compliments one of my friends got. Do you remember? Nah, I'm not going to say his name, but we have a friend that would always give out compliments like that. Like, I can't even think off the top of my head, but just way out there, just like, Thanks. <laughs> so Those crazy are some of the best. Bring it up with any sort of like, like if you don't constantly do that, if you're not a person who's constantly being like, mm-hmm. yes, bitch, like everything, <laughs> then then like bringing it up randomly then is just like, oh, you've Weird. been thinking that the whole time. Mm-hmm. You've been thinking that the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And we did catch her last episode looking at Blaine's bud. So we know <laughs> she's been thinking of the perfect compliment. There was a dear diary. <laughs> yes. So my mantra is promises are traps. I'm now adding compliments are traps. <laughs> promises and compliments are traps. <laughs> nice people are traps. <laughs> the human uh, condition is terrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... Uh, so then, uh, what is the, what oh yeah, so then Sam is all like, come to my session to get ready for, uh, like to get calendar ready. Um, broga. Broga, yeah, they're doing broga yoga for bros, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I put, in college when I was an RA, I had a Glee bulletin board for like, have a gleeful new year. And I like did random tips from Glee and it was like, get fit. And I put the clip of, Bro guides, yoga for bros. Pretty sure everybody was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy knows what's up. Please. Everybody likes <laughs> Really poor demographic at Oakland University. <laughs> yeah. Um so 
yeah, so he's like teaching them like yoga and he's talking about like shaving and then like stuffing with baby socks. That Make was sure deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> Why mm. would they have athletes put on them? Babies aren't athletes. <laughs> So where, are you, where are you getting the baby sacks? Right? It's so deeply disturbing. Are these like, you're like, this is his like hot tip and he does it like all the time, but just with the same pair of baby sacks. Oh, maybe that's why. Oh. It's, like, do this. it's like a false eyelash where you can like read. <laughs> oh, uncomfy. It's gross. That's gross. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I have to. I have to say, at least he's not going oh. overboard with like a giant pack of like the fluffiest socks and stuffing it down there. He's being really like realistic <laughs> about it. <laughs> Subtlety, it's an art. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then uh, so he's like doing all these tips, and then it goes into a mashup of <laughs> it's getting hot in here and angel in the center full <laughs> like, oh, we're all just like this, come on <laughs> that was, this is my favorite song of the episode <laughs> right there i literally woke up not that long ago and i just finished the episode and I texted Cullen, I was like, it's too early for this bullshit. That was <laughs> deeply disturbing. I literally was trying to write, like, this song is, this mashup is, I tried to think of something and all I could write was a sin. It's a sin <laughs> against humanity. <laughs> you know, like the cheerleaders were in there covering them with like spray tan. Why were the Cheerios singing with like them? Why are Actually, they in the Glee Club? They're also terrible with spray tans. <laughs> yeah, yeah they were right? but that not shown late. Like, I think that would have been way funnier if they just had terrible spray tans for the <laughs> actual photo shoot. <laughs> just like really bad screen. I loved uh, Jake's reaction. Like, Over he was these getting like a spray tan. He's like, can't. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this makes me think of our, our mutual friend, Kate Clark, who in college was this very Christian girl and she would always sing, it's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. Whenever we were doing RA duty rounds. <laughs> what? College was a good time. <laughs> I don't think there's any denying that even it's 2021 and I don't think anybody can go, it's getting hot. And then everybody like, don't take off all your clothes. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's impossible. It's, it's our generation's curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all your clothes. <laughs> but also it made me want to listen to that song. Not obviously the Glee version, but I want to be like, I could go for some Nelly right now. It's been a while. All, all the time. <laughs> Yeah, um, and so they're doing like this like workout dance routine. Um, Artie makes a comment earlier where he's like, "Some of us aren't CW, some of us are more PBS." <laughs> that was that was funny. Um, and so Artie's watching, kind of like upset. Um, as yeah, so that number happens. Um, <laughs> And Finn is like, oh yeah, that's awesome. He goes to like high five Artie, and Artie is just like, no. no. I just, I just, I, I'm sure you guys have probably already started talking about it, but I just cannot get over the fact that Finn. I mean, obviously, because he's still partially a child, but he's like, yeah, this is a great idea to do a a sort of a pseudo nudie calendar with these children, some of whom are under age. And he's just like, high five, bruh. I'm like, Finn, you idiot. Mm. The idea that can come from somebody who just got out of school themselves to be like- Yeah, I was like super in character, but you're gonna get fired from your volunteer job. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been volunteering wrong. <laughs> yeah, really. I wanna, no, I don't wanna join again. Yeah, I should just bring up to every every position <laughs> the rotary club we should do a nude calendar <laughs> um yeah so 
they that's the, so Sam is kind of like becoming a diva. Like they're shooting the calendar. Um, oh, Artie has a scene before this. Yeah, um, Artie is like. So Finn brings Artie to the library and he's like, I need you to find Sue Sylvester's centerfold. And he's like, you mean you want me to spend hours going through vintage porn? You've come to the right place. Uh, I was like, ew. Gross. <laughs> Your phone like, might as well. Oh, oh, yeah. And he's like, I know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I came to you specifically because I yes. know how much of a perv you are. Yes. I need that. <laughs> And then Artie is like, you know, I don't really feel comfortable being in the calendar. And Finn's like, oh, you could do this or that. Or, and he's like, you're not listening. I really just don't want to do it. And Finn's like, you know, it's okay. It's cool to respect your body and like whatever you want to do. Um, and I respect that. And that's already way better than anything Mr. Shu would have said. Yeah, yeah. that was actually a nice moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's something I know that happens later in the show that proves Mr. Shu would not have said this. <laughs> Love it. Can't wait. Um, so Finn is, even as an idiot volunteer doing an underage nudie calendar, is already better at his job than Mr. Shu ever was. <laughs> And also, like, it's funny because, like, if anyone would understand not wanting to show up their body, it would be Finn because he had, like, body issues when he was in the club himself. Mm -hmm. So, like, he would be like, he could at least somewhat understand that. I don't know. Yeah, he relates. Yeah, because there's a scene in the Rocky Horror Glee show, maybe we rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where he was walking down the hall in his underwear and he got, like reprimanded which sam did not because sam is a hottie so well sam also had swim trunks on that's different and he had uggs on so he was extra cozy <laughs> yeah yeah um so then it's time for the shoot and Artie's like i'm just fine holding this white balance like this white light reflector um and everyone's being a diva or sam's being a diva and they're like oh, why don't we do a group picture? Like, Blaine's looking cute. Tina points out that Blaine's looking cute. Um, and Joe, get in there, and uh, Sam's like, Joe, next to me, you're going to look like a bloated Bob Marley. Um, and he's so like, was, God, maybe the way I am, dude. I, I was just, like, can I just say that Joe's months were my favorite? Him as the bunny <laughs> rabbit, and then him as that, like, weird farmer. <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, the farmer. <laughs> Yeah, that was very I'm laughing weird. every time they put up that farmer. <laughs> I, actually, I, I actually had to uh, go back because I thought it was, um, I thought it, I didn't know who it was, but I thought it was someone in like a rice paddy field for a second. I like looked and I was like, what? And then I was, it was like just a regular farm over here in the Americas. Is that supposed to be May though? Like, is that the month? Yes. Farming month. Like, <laughs> National <laughs> farming month. <laughs> uh, unless it was like fall for harvesting, maybe? Possibly. Like, uh, but, it, but it looked harvest? very spring. I think it was yeah. spring because Sam was September and. Uh, oh, maybe it was like April? April and May. Because he yeah. was April for. Or maybe the Easter was, Bunny. Yeah, because okay, March would have been a, Artie. He was a back to back. Yeah, so. yeah. Um. So uh, he's, Sam is like, this should just be a Sam Evans calendar, and Artie's like, yeah, you could go as a different brand of jerkwad. Um. And Sam was having a time. Yeah. Like yeah. even in the um, the. The musical number. Yes, the musical. I was going to call it a music video, which I guess kind of, sort of works, but... And the musical number. Like, he was keeping track of everyone's weight, and he was, like, mm -hmm. measuring... His body yeah. fat with those, like, pictures. The yeah. body fat. Yeah, those forceps. Do you have to do that, Aaron? <laughs> sure, <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, not... Not for bot. Uh, well, I guess we did. Yeah, we did the beginning of the season, six weeks in, and the end of the season. Oh, okay. Like, because you had to track your progress. Yeah. Okay. Wow. 
but it wasn't for synchro swimming though. <laughs> <laughs> I also got to use those forceps for uh, another experiment though. Oh, oh. are you gonna elaborate? <laughs> I want to know. No, I'm just going to do it at that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that was this uh, experiment you can sign up for at Oakland that would pay you uh, to do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was like, Ar- Aaron's provided, I think, <laughs> children around the world. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was for purely yeah, testing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> that one didn't happen, yeah. <laughs> Um, for science, for science, for science, yeah, yes. science. Um, so and then he's like going crazy doing jump rope and then like push ups, he's like pushing himself. Um, and then uh, so he's like, Oh, I lost my pump, I need to like grab the weights. He's like, Give me five minutes. What and, does that even mean? Like, after oh. you've just lifted weights, you look like your muscles are like defined. activated. Yeah, yeah, so they look more defined. Oh. Yeah, they're activated, yeah. so they look a little bigger. So, and... Yeah, true story. When, like the swim team would, the swim team go to basketball games in our speedos. We would definitely do a bunch of push ups and abs before running onto the court. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> real jacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always fun. Um, and uh. So then Blaine comes up and he's like, put the weight down. And he's like, Sam, like, calm down. You're going crazy. You're being a real diva. And Sam's like, my body is all I have. Like, that's what matters. And uh, like, do you think people laugh at my impressions because they're good? No, they laugh because I'm already, they're already on board because of the way I look. Mm-hmm. And Blaine is like, you have so much more to give. You're a wonderful person. Like, give yourself a break. Eat a cheeseburger. Eat a bag of Cheetos. Skip a workout. Like, you're more than your body. You have more to give. Like, we laugh at your impressions because we like you. You're our friend. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam's yeah. going through it. Yeah. He was having some deep thoughts underneath that facade there. Yes, having yeah. a time is a... Yeah. Best looking. <laughs> well, this connects to the Rocky Horror Glee project again. May we rest in peace. Um, <laughs> where Mr. Shu gave him body image issues by saying, like, no, I should play Rocky. And he was like, oh, it must be because I'm too fat to play Rocky. Oh, yeah. I forgot because I have been actively, still to this day, <laughs> trying to forget that episode. Um, Waking up. Yeah. In- and then the reason he ended up actually wanting to be Rocky was so he could show off his abs to Emma, right? Something like yeah. that. Yeah, and perform a sex scene with his underage student. Ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who used to have Yeah, Aaron, you don't. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's- Honestly, this is a pretty nice episode to just pop in and pop out. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> I was trying to explain it in the beginning. I was like, so this show would not be made today. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, just like ride it. (laughs) Yeah, just ride it. (laughs) That's what we do. Except we stop and think about the ride and torture ourselves. (laughs) Yeah, really. Like these episodes would be a lot shorter for like, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. That's it. All right. Bye. (laughs) No commentary in between. Uh, yeah, so then, uh, <laughs> Sam, like, kind of calms down calms and then, well, well, what's that? He kind of calms down. He kind of calms down, guys. <laughs> um, and then, he, uh, Blaine summoned, like, has Emma call him to the counseling office. Um, so we actually see Emma at her job. We haven't but seen this in a while. First in, like, <laughs> five or six weeks. Yeah, I forgot or Emma more. existed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he comes in, he's like, oh, you want to see me? And she's like, yeah, Blaine called me in. And she's like, these are schools that don't require an SAT or ACT score. Um, they recognize intelligence isn't always measured by a test. I was so happy that she was not talking to him about <laughs> body image issues. Yeah. I, mean, I was sort of expecting that, but then I was like, oh, she's giving him a colleges. This is so much better. Well, I hope pamphlets was for a Jewish school. <laughs> <laughs> One of the pamphlets she gave was for Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that 
maybe she like slipped in like a therapist card in with yeah. it and was just like <laughs> browse through all of this information. Yeah. Um and then uh she's like, you can always retake it. People do it all the time, but you know, it's not required. And then uh she also gives some information for scholarships and it's like, if you write a personal essay, like you could get some money because Sam is like, I'm too poor to afford college, which ties what we've been saying all season, where is Sam living? His family is in Kentucky because they moved there for his dad's new job. Where does where Sam live? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is, uh, who knows? I think maybe he lives in the gym. In that yeah, I, I still vote he her, probably yeah. lives Why in the so school familiar. somewhere. So Aaron has five minutes before he has to peace out early. So before Aaron leaves, I just want real quickly, Aaron, so your favorite song was It's Getting Hot in Here slash Mashup. Mashup. Centerfold. Oh my God. With the centerfold. <laughs> uh, what was your least favorite song? Uh, it was definitely the Let Me Love You one. I did not like how that was saying at all. It was torture to my ears. Not good for me. He gets it. <laughs> Aaron said Neo should be performed as is. <laughs> um, <laughs> not be this. <laughs> and then, uh, who is your least favorite character? <laughs> oh, man. I, I didn't come prepared. I guess I didn't study for this test. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there was anything, anybody when we were watching that you really like hated. This is actually uh, an episode where not everybody's like awful. awful to each other. There's not a lot of contention. Yeah. It's more like inner turmoil. So you don't, he doesn't have to really hate <laughs> the actions of anybody else because it's like, I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm pleading the fifth i got no one on that one who did you like though did you like anyone uh i think i like the one that had the sex tape leak and she just like owned it she's like yeah oh, that's why i don't want you to do this yeah. yeah yeah she's like yeah so this is why i don't want you to do this because i have to live with that now i'm like she owned it confessed to it now she's trying to help someone else avoid a mistake so just for that one little clip she became my yeah. favorite and that's a good favorite to have Aaron. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts on like the whole Sam body image storyline? Mm, so I think, you know, it's just like the inner turmoil. We all go through different things. So, you know, he's struggling with grades. So then he has to focus on his body. And then if it's not meeting a certain standard or like what his expectations are or what he wants it to be or what people think he is, then it can be definitely a struggle. Um, cause I know even for me is like, I do work out regularly and if I see that like gaining some pounds or if I like, I don't know, just see that it's like, oh, I got to lose weight. It's part, like, cause it's not necessarily health. It's just kind of like own body image. So I can see where that gets too obsessive and too far where it's like, no, this is what people think of me. So this is why I have to do it. Um, so I'm glad, you know, he has friends that can help him there and see that it's not all about that. Cause there's a lot more to make a person than just their body. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then is there anything on social media that you like? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anything on social media that you like to plug, like that you want us to plug to our listeners to follow you or your brand? Sure. Or you can follow, follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Aaron Helander, A A R O N, Helander, H E. L A N D E R. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm not consistent at posting videos. It's been a couple months since I posted one. Um, follow there. And then, yeah, I work for Karma Jack Digital Marketing. So plug the job too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Aaron's oh, yeah, always on that grind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on it. But yeah. Uh, also looking for more rental properties. So if anyone's selling a house, let me know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gotta hustle. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. Glad to get to watch this video and be a part of it. Maybe you'll have me back sometime and I'll pop in for another random episode. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Oh, he bounced. He bounced. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I have five minutes. So he texted me. So I was like, okay, let's wrap this up for Aaron. Um, 
So, okay, so we're almost done with the Sam stuff. Um, so, like, Blaine points out, like, hey, you're on the synchronized swimming team, you're on student council, you're in the glee club, like, that's all stuff to promote. Um, and Blaine has people put together a video of all the things Sam has inspired them to do. Like, Mercedes taught, is like, Sam inspired me to move to L.A. Santana is like, Sam inspired me to try songwriting, to start singing Shrouty Mouth. Oh, boy. <laughs> that video is so dumb. <laughs> like good like nice like cheesy i had to explain to Aaron. i was like yeah sometimes it gets like really corny <laughs> i'm also uh, getting my laundry sorry <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh they're talking just talking about how sam moved from his family or moved helped support his family in kentucky by being a male stripper um and how he helps support his family when they're living in a motel. And so Finn is like, Sam is a really substantial person. And so Sam gets teary eyed. He's like, thank you, Blaine. And Blaine's like, yeah, that's your essay. Um, mm, it's not because you can't just turn in a video. He has to still write the essay. Right? That's I was like, that's such a dumb line. It's not your essay. I mean, sure, you use it as inspiration. You're like, people tell me that... I helped start Sean Connery's career. Oh, Brit- Brittany is like, he was the first person in America to do a Sean Connery impression that really jumpstarted Sean Connery's career. I thought it was about being like homeless. I thought he was like, that's your essay. Oh, <laughs> that's a good point. That would be a good essay though. You, you know it would be. But like, how do you, I mean, I mean, I guess you could be like, yeah. And I also like, I had to like work at a strip club, even though I told my family I was picking up extra ships of shifts at the Dairy Queen. You don't right. have to say you work at the strip club, but like you overcome adversity. But you got to be specific in those essays. Yeah, but you don't. He could, he could say, I work two jobs. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. One was more intense than the other. Because you have to make sure that you, if you tip your blizzard over, it cannot come out. Because otherwise you get to give people free blizzards. That's my joke for as if Dairy Queen was the more intense one. Everybody yeah. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I like Somehow I thought it was an allegory for making sure that you write the truth in your essay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, for you. sure. Also, I'm triggered by the word allegory <laughs> because of this episode. Oh yeah, it's an allegory. <laughs> I wanted to punch her in the face and then steal her bowler hat. Anyway, we'll get there. Um. So, uh, oh yeah, I just love that character. Okay. <laughs> um, so then, uh, Finn goes to sue and is like i found your centerfold um and uh, he's she, in a, like a manila envelope and she's like you know i'm happy to take a gander at that glorious taco uncomfortable Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> earlier she said that um they called her pose like something something the not so bald eagle and I was like, or bald spread eagle. And I was well, like, she, oh God. She also said that it was so her suit. And then I had to look up her suit. And then her suit just means hairy. <laughs> oh shit. I didn't know. Yeah, well, I guess she it was said, not so bald. And then she said bald eagle, but it's like. Yeah, she said the like, not so bald spread eagle. And I'm like, mm. um, but yeah, so it's in this manila envelope. And she's like, I'm going to take a look at this glorious taco. Don't like that phrase. She opens it and it's a fucking highlights magazine. And I laughed really hard. <laughs> that was real good. And she's like, why did you let me open it? You had me. And Finn's like, because now I recorded your confession. Isn't Which is that like a legal like a smart move for Finn? <laughs> that is smart for Finn, but that is... How, how, why is it illegal? I think you can't like record someone without their consent and like try to use it in court unless you're like a police officer. 
I don't think he's trying to. I think. I, mean, I don't like, know. Uh, I yeah, think but I'm saying cool, like. Though. I don't know. I'm like, it could be just a movie takes thing. Sylvester to court. <laughs> but like, I think that they've used the recording undercover thing a couple times, right? Like it's, Santana takes it to her underboob. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I, ca- I could not figure out how she did that to get like the sound to work. And <laughs> I still don't get it. Was Emily on that episode? Yes, because that was that's my oh my god! Song. It's my favorite song of the whole thing. Is that that epic cello battle? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh... Oh my god! Okay, I literally just typed the word "is" into Google, and it gave me: Is it going to rain today? Is it going to rain today, Tampa? Is weed legal in Florida? <laughs> Is today a holiday? Is pneumonia contagious? <laughs> Florida out here is struggling. <laughs> Yikes. So, oh, really quickly, Aaron texted me that he would also like to say uh, that he liked the girl at the calendar signing who told um, <laughs> the guy that he could tap that anytime. <laughs> Not a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um yeah. So. Okay. Under the Federal Wiretap Act, it is illegal for any person to secretly court an oral, telephonic, or electronic communication that other parties to the com to the communication reasonably expect to be private fun fact so but it's, it's not seems... a movie thing wow mm. that happens so often in hollywood where you support right? people and then they go to jail and it, yeah it happens just like all the time and of course like <laughs> yeah i'll allow it i think that like there are like workarounds but in general it seems to be illegal I need to stop doing research for this podcast. I don't want to be informing people. <laughs> this makes me think of when Kim Kardashian released the altered oh, phone recording I, of Taylor Swift. No, I can't even talk about that. I was so I was so incensed by that whole situation that I wrote a Tumblr post about it, and I've never <laughs> written a Tumblr post before then, or since. And then years later, they found out they cut parts where Taylor Swift didn't approve certain lines yes. or something. Yeah. But also just the general thing is that like, it was literally pitted these two women against each other when really it's all Kanye's fault. Yes. It's all his fault. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we get into that uh, album inspiring uh, conflict, um, Let's talk about, uh, so Sam comes up to Artie and is like, you should be in the calendar. And Sam's like, or Artie's like, I don't want to be the only one wearing clothes. And Sam's like, you won't be. Um, I'll be wearing clothes too. So Sam wears clothes for his lifeguard pose and he does a back to school pose in like a schoolboy outfit. Uh, he doesn't do anything shirtless. It's only the other guys. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, it was like an interesting twist yeah for him yeah i think Mm -hmm. um and so yeah so they released the calendar and the girls are asking for it to be signed Dottie tells Ryder that he can tap that Uh, (laughs) um glorious (laughs) becky is like sign it to the future what's his name he keeps getting just like random girls are just like are basically like giving him bedroom eyes constantly because there was that the girl with the neck brace the neck brace cheerio last episode for sadie hawkins Ryder, Ryder. played by blake played by blake jenner oh i was like i could have sworn his name was blake it is blake (laughs) it is um yeah it's just so strange that like they have to remind us that he's super attractive, but like he's stuck in this weird position where he seems to not want to date anyone because he's in love with Marley. It's very weird. <laughs> They're just reminding you that he is, you know, a catch. Like, yeah. Just remember he's hot. I'm like, okay. Aware. 
it'll come up later. <laughs> um, and then uh, Becky is like, make it out to the future. Uh, Miss Artie Abram, Mrs. Artie Abrams, uh, I wish you'd take your shirt off, stud. And Artie's just like, okay. Um, and then we'll get to the Jarly stuff later. Jarly? Uh, oh, I hate it. As, <laughs> as much I said, as I hate their relationship. <laughs> I just thought it was really cute this episode. Um, no. I'm, I actually did too, <laughs> which is a very out of character for me. In a high school way. I think in a high school way. Yeah, yeah it was, it was yeah. just cute. Like, like young a... romance or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I, because I want Marley to be, I want her to be happy. And this is just making me not happy. So I'm just assuming that she's not happy. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like Jake. I don't, I, I really think it's, I don't like his singing voice. And so I just, I put every, cause this episode for them was a lot of like singing, not as much talking. And you know, I don't care for his singing. Yes. Very throaty, <laughs> very, very Kermit-esque. It comes out of his nose. Yeah. Just come out of here. Only when he's belting. This is something I noticed. I didn't, I literally was like, Okay, he's singing Neo, got it. Fast forwarding. We all hated the Neo song. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we can get to that. So yeah, so that's basically the end of the calendar stuff. Um, oh, uh, Sue tells Finn that he's a worthy adversary and she can't wait to destroy him. Which is interesting. I don't think she ever gave that compliment question mark <laughs> to shoe no she just had her, all of her Compl- her insults for his hair i know yeah. like just like all directed at his hair like <laughs> and we were all like not, good <laughs> <laughs> he's not a person he's just hair on a person's suit her suit <laughs> oh no <laughs> stop no. it <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jarly, um so Brittany asks Marley, oh, what are you doing after school today? <laughs> and we get the return of fondue for two. Finally. <laughs> um, a sticker that Hannah gave me that is on my water bottle. I take it every day to work. <laughs> um It's your favorite YouTube show. <laughs> fondue for two. Classic. Um, and then she like She's like, you may know her as the girl with the fat mom who ruined sectionals for everyone. Oh, I guess we should talk about the sectional stuff. Um, okay, yes, let's talk about that. The I opening forgot. of the episode. Because the opening of the episode is Hunter is like, I did not use roids. And then they're like, what about the academics that you look way too old to be in high school? And then he's like, and he just well, like rips this, this person's head off hypothetically. <laughs> Uh, and they're like almost literally he was like assaulting literally. people yeah and they're like the war boys tested positive for steroids so mckinley's it's, it's the news show it's with rod and i called her the reba lookalike because i couldn't remember her name <laughs> fair but fair. <laughs> like rod's like reporting on this and then she flips out this lady is like this is what they consider news and I was it's like, actually, I'm with her. You know what I was thinking while I was watching this? I was like, this will never make news. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I'm with the Reba lookalike. This is not news. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I went to school for this, and she kicks a random trash can that's suddenly super close to the shooting <laughs> yeah, stage. Right off screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, I guess someone's getting a younger, hotter co-anchor. Oh, yeah, gross. <laughs> <laughs> that was disgusting. And then he's like... Uh, uh, Fort Wayne Squirrel, <laughs> that's also a, a doctor. doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. And then we get to the choir room and everyone's like, yay. Oh yeah, because in his news guys, he's like, that means Lima's own McKinley High School is going to regionals. regionals. Like, they didn't finish their set. They're not going anywhere. Why Why not the Amish I don't even people? remember. I was like, who even, <laughs> Who do they compete against? The Amish should be going. Send the Amish. <laughs> they did a whole set and it was okay. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So playing catch up. Did she ruin sectionals because she passed out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because of the the kitty thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So really, it's not her fault, Ooh. and they never <laughs> say and, that. And this would have never happened in an actual real life situation where they would have been like, "Okay, well, I guess you guys are out of the competition." No. Yeah, wouldn't they be like, "Are you like okay?" We have- they would have gotten her medical attention, and <laughs> yeah. then the rest of the team would have had to finish their set or totally forfeit. They would have an option. Yeah. Um, What's going on behind you, me. Anna? what is that in the background oh it's a calendar and my fan's on so it's blowing okay air. i was like do you have ghosts <laughs> yes <laughs> um the ghost of a tv also, show don't ever do that <laughs> because i could like look in the thing behind me and there could be like ghost face murderer behind <laughs> me that would stop me <laughs> like if, if that happens to be like there's a murderer <laughs> And then we call 911 and be like, I don't know where she lives. It's somewhere in Florida. <laughs> she read us off the Google auto auto save thing and it said Tampa, I think in Tampa. <laughs> and that is an enormous county. Yeah, she said, What is the weather? Tampa. What is- <laughs> We're putting the clues together. <laughs> Let me transfer you to Tampa's. <laughs> <laughs> so uh then Brittany's like oh I heard you waited in line to see the Hunger Games and Marley's like yeah I love the Hunger Games and she's like do you relate to them because you're also hungry so the best part about Brittany <laughs> is that she's doling out what are insults but because she just doesn't have the awareness all the time she's just like asking the hard questions yeah she doesn't know <laughs> a hard-hitting journalism <laughs> i oh my god it was just so funny and then a great scene marley's like my mom used to say i was a pet psychic um and she's like, yeah, she lord, totally dodges the question what is lord tubbington thinking and then she's like he's thinking how he wants to lose some weight and he's looking what was the other thing he has a gambling online yeah, gambling, gambling addiction. Addiction. Yes, because she's watching him gamble online <laughs> and search weight loss videos but that's what okay so i couldn't tell if the computer was actually there and he was doing that or if she was actually having a psychic vision i couldn't tell and it was like her imagining that he wanted to do that i think that it was supposed to be he was actually doing it <laughs> Okay, well, either way, it's still hilarious. And Brittany's like, no. If you had told me he was secretly a slumlord, I would have believed you. And then she's like, your high rises are not up to code, and those families are living in in squalor. (laughs) And Lord Cummington's just like, (laughs) wow. (laughs) Meow. I love Lord Cummington, our thick boy. Um, And then uh, Brittany's like, Rumor has it that you're totally in love with Jake. And I was like, what? And she's like, if Jake is the, is willing to take his clothes off for the men in the killing calendar, you should be willing to do him the same courtesy. And she's like, you mean take my clothes off? She's <laughs> like, no, I mean, tell him how you feel. Um, I'm like, that doesn't really... Doesn't track. Hmm. <laughs> Those things are not the same. Uh, so then uh, Marley says uh and call, calls jake over because it's an emergency and he's like i assume that means auditorium's on fire being attacked by killer monkeys and she's like the monkeys had squirt guns and they put the fire out <laughs> that sounded funnier in my head <laughs> I, <laughs> is saying, Boo. <laughs> I thought what? it was like weirdly well, charming like, for yeah, her like, whatever she's she's quirky and she's- yeah that's what it was it was like oh she's yeah. very obviously quirky but it was yeah like, it was kind of charming she's like, like ha and he's like oh like it's so cute that she's just like rambling <laughs> <laughs> yeah quirky yeah and then uh jake um Jake is like, oh, okay, so what did you call me for? She's like, oh, there's some songs I wanted to practice for regionals. Um, and he's like, oh, this, she's like, I have this song. He's like, oh, it's super romantic. And she's like, oh, is it? 
Uh, then, yeah, it was played during the Twilight Wedding in Breaking Dawn yeah. Part 1. Of course, it's romantic. That's the most romantic we movie did, ever. We did say that this song was for <laughs> Yeah. I, I had no idea that it was from that, though. Like, I thought it was written and then they used it. I Yeah, I had no idea that's where yeah, it originated. Yeah, it's a chicken egg situation. I actually don't... I kind of feel like she... She maybe was commissioned to write a song and she wrote that. Because the, there's five and then it was clips in the album. music video. Yeah. So I think maybe she was commissioned to write it or yeah. well, it just like a thousand happened to- years now makes a little bit more sense. I'm like, what are yeah. we talking about? Reincarnation or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about, Christina? <laughs> no, Perry. talking you, about vampires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking yeah, about vampire love. That ooh, ooh. Wouldn't, oh, that's just a really, that's just like a song. Like, I'm just so silly. Like, <laughs> I'm so quirky. <laughs> and, and so they, they sing Thousand Years. Actually, I've always thought this was a really romantic song. It is really pretty. Is nice I song. like the song a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the main reasons I would even go back and watch Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. I remember why they, I know it that it's in that specific one. Don't I ask. feel like I've also played this for like my high school boyfriend. They played <laughs> yeah. it at my senior prom. Yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Like, I will yeah. love you yeah. for like a thousand, thousand years. And or <laughs> <laughs> and you got me at the prom. <laughs> <laughs> Just get really upset. <laughs> Oh, yeah no. i remember like talking to my date this makes you think of like snow white and once upon a time um and she was like they wrote this song for twilight <laughs> <laughs> sounds like same thing same thing yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i mean she did actually play snow white oh yeah snow white oh, true. yeah great film my voice cracked because how serious i was <laughs> about that <laughs> yeah um so uh they sing and then she's like i love he's like it looks like you want to tell me something and she's like i love this song but it's not right for regionals and he's like okay and then uh we get a scene of jake yeah jake's his name jake and Ryder working out and Ryder's like i think i'm gonna name my shoulders and he's like, you name your arms after guns, not your shoulders. And he's like, shoulders are part of your arms. And he's like, shoulders are shoulders. Um, and then there. Is this like a real thing? I feel like do, do men name their muscles? Like you've never do. heard this? Some do. Yeah, yeah. I've been like this Smith and Weston is definitely like like the, Welcome to the Gun Show. Yeah, the Gun Show. Did you just think it was like a big joke that like no yeah, one actually no, did? No, I've heard it before, but like. But like, do people actually do it? Right, you didn't realize people do it in real life. Yeah, oh, I think they do. Oh, no. I mean, I like mean, adolescent conversation because like I work with a bunch of sixteen-year-olds, and like a big conversation for like a month was like, is is like what like is ice wet? Like is water wet? Like like all of these things. Like the like, shoulders are part of your arms. Like, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> but are they? I'm. <laughs> it does, right? I, I think it has to be ground. because your rotator cuff is in your arm your shoulder and that's how you move your arm <laughs> so they're both you right know. and both wrong we don't know uh, and this is how the western medical field has destroyed the unity of the body <laughs> Okay. Wow, uh, that's so fucking intense. <laughs> the unity of the body. Western medicine. I'm I'm just saying. Western like, medicine is divided into different like and it's being areas of the body, here. and they sort of treat it like sections of the body. When Eastern medicine treats the body as a whole. And it's like a completely different way to think about how the body works and how medicine works. You're saying shoulders are not shoulders (laughs) or our shoulders, your arms. The shoulder is part of the arm, part of the body. Is Emily. Yes. (laughs) So technically your shoulders are named Emily. Yeah. Emily and Emily. (laughs) 
<laughs> what about the Obamas, Hannah? I was going to mention that, but then, yeah, I have something named the Obamas. Uh, people decide what they think it is. <laughs> um so then this all this conversation is dry ends up and then taking their shirts off and flexing at each other do i need to humiliate you bro that's so dumb do people do that is that like a probably teenagers probably do that i feel like some teen boys do yeah and then Tina and Kitty just walk into the boys' locker room. And uh, Kitty's like... Well, Ryder's like, you can't come in here. And I'm like, yeah, you can't. They could be naked at any time because it's a locker room. And... uh, There's also other people than the Glee Club that use that locker room. Yeah. (laughs) guy just like... (laughs) Just like Henry in the corner. Like- Although, to be fair, they've been sort of floating around the locker room as a glee club. Yeah. Well, they don't. Well, no. It was in the locker Wait, room. That's where they were in the, the choir song. room again this this week. Yeah. And yeah, they got. So did they get it back last week? Yes. They because of regionals. Yeah. Okay. But last week they were in the locker room. You're right. Yeah, but I'm saying that's what I'm saying is like. Wait a second, how did they get their classroom back? Because they now have, have a competition, regionals. yeah. But why didn't Sue throw a humongous fit on camera? Because, because Glee. No. Said, We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. they're in the locker room. They're they in do the locker room. Show. And Kitty's, Kitty's like, oh yeah, we were drawn by your sex magnets or something. Chick magnets. Yeah. <laughs> and then Tina's like, I'm going to go find Artie and talk to him about his sexy leprechaun look. Um, and I'm like, no one can beat my sexy leprechaun look for the unpublished college <laughs> March calendar. <laughs> you really, um, can't. You really can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, you were in a calendar? Oh. Hey, I wasn't here when we talked about this. I mean, we can cut this. It's fine. I need to know, though. An adult, an, a, an adult co-worker, us college students thought we are going to make a sexy calendar for him. And I was March because I'm Irish. Makes sense. Checks out. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, really sure, like, I, yeah. It was like it. This was this was like a, like the whole summer. Like we did this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these photos <laughs> in different parts of like the campus to use for like different seasons. Why didn't That's you publish really it? Because then it was the end of the summer, and we all had to move and on to other gave, jobs. We showed him the photos, but we never just like printed the calendar. <laughs> I was gonna say, what it year has something was it? To do with actually printing it. <laughs> This was what then, 2014, 2015? I was, so it's your first OGL summer, my second. So yeah. I, that so was 20. In a couple of years, you'll be able to reuse the, I mean, if you had made the actual calendar, but you would yeah, have been able to reuse it. it. <laughs> could have brought it back. <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. Do you guys know where these photos are now? They're somewhere in a university computer. <laughs> What? They're not even like in one of your possessions? <laughs> no, they're deep in a university computer, including I a picture of me spanking someone somewhere. with a pool noodle. You might because have them. How, what did did we take them on my camera? Did did you have a nice camera? I had I had the actual camera, but I think I might have them on my old laptop, like not on my MacBook somewhere. If I find them, I'll let you know. <laughs> If I ever find, but yes. I am stunned that they could just be on like on a campus computer. Oh, oh yeah, they're probably gone. You know, someone deleted those. Oh, well, that, I don't and know. I think I, don't know about that. I mean, usually, I mean, it depends on the system, but typically, like when you log out, if you don't save things somewhere, everything just gets deleted. Oh, it was yeah. saved somewhere. Oh, it's in like a file. <laughs> yeah, but if the file is connected to your student account student account then it will no, like we worked it. for an office 
It's on like an office computer. Like we we worked in a school <laughs> office and we did this on school office computers. <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't, it wasn't like our laptops that we brought into the office. It wasn't like we literally like plugged it in <laughs> to an office computer. I love this here. idea <laughs> so much. <laughs> Does you that person even work in that office anymore? I think they still do. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say it'd be funny if like they didn't even work there. <laughs> well, if you just show them the office. pictures, they probably show it to every other person who comes in. I would assume <laughs> yes. Like he's probably like, who are these absolute idiots? <laughs> <laughs> just goofing around all summer. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So. <laughs> Puck, or not Puck, Jake tells Ryder. I mean, technically he's Puck. (laughs) He's a Pucker man, yeah. Uh, He tells Ryder that he's like, I, he's like, Marley felt like, he's like, I can tell when a girl likes me in another room, but now I can't focus on that because I just like Marley. He's like, but I don't mean to talk about her in front of her. And he's like, yeah, it's okay. Um, and he's like, yeah, I felt like she was going to say it. And he's like, what's it? He's like, you know, like, I love you. And he's like, Does oh, anyone it. ever talk about the words I love you like that, except in movies? No, because I think you can just say she almost said I love you or she almost said that she loves me. Simple as right. that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, it's got to it be a movie a thing? thing. I don't it's get a, it. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, and so then uh, they are like, he's like, oh, well, like, maybe you should tell her first. And he's like, I don't know, I can't do that. And he's like, you should try. And then, uh, so then at the Glee Club, he sings No, Neos. he says, he says, <laughs> he said, you have to get, what oh emotionally naked naked yes <laughs> he worked in naked i was like that's the title of the episode <laughs> yeah you have to get emotionally naked with her bruh something like that Bro. get naked emotionally <laughs> i have that in quotes written down yeah yeah i remember that line and laughing at it yeah and, and then i have written let me love you happened and i'm fast forwarding <laughs> yeah so he sings neo's let me love you and in the background you see kitty just like Ugh. yeah <laughs> uh, and marley's like tearing up and then they're like oh that was amazing and they're like is who is this song for he's like it was for marley and writer's like is there anything you want to say to marley and he's like i think the song says it Itself. Which also, why would you say that? Like, why would you, like, also as someone who dated that person, be like, also, like, let me facilitate this in front of our friends. Okay, that felt one extremely private thing felt high school. In front of everybody. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, that was literally last like- week's episode was making Tina confess kind of confess that <laughs> yeah, she liked yeah, Blaine right. and then get totally obliterated when he was like, uh, no, I don't want to do the Sadie Hawkins dance with you. Yeah, so nobody learned that maybe you should take yeah. it out of the classroom. <laughs> it actually felt like true to life to me. Like, the people would do that in high school. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, we talked about promposals and stuff like that last week, so it, it, it all fits in that that generation yeah yeah he, thought he was helping he was trying to help <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah so uh then when they're signing calendars uh jake is like oh i already made one out for you marley and he signed on his i love you jake and she's like i love you back and they kiss and Becky's like, boo, get a room. That I think is the dumbest way to tell somebody you love them. <laughs> so write it on a calendar in silver Sharpie. He didn't technically say it. He wrote it. He still didn't say it. Yeah. It it's was like, almost, he didn't even say it. <laughs> it's almost, this is almost as bad as the Sex and the City episode where one of the character's boyfriends tells her he, he loves her 
on a giant cookie. He gets a giant cookie written, I love you. That that has stuck with me for years as the dumbest. This is like second to that. Also, I don't remember his pictures, but why did he choose the October one? <laughs> I think write, Kitty I just I think Kitty just chose it because of the Jacob name. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. but like why did he use that one for the I love you? Because it was like the worst of all of them. <laughs> yeah, no, like what was his other That's one? True. Do we even know? Maybe he only took I think one. they showed the whole calendar. I think he was it was a beach scene? Wasn't he I summer so. one? Like that was yeah. at least yeah, he was a beach sure. scene. And he was like riding a dolphin or something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not that that would have been like any better. A little. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he chose that one because he had the silver Sharpie and he had to write on a dark surface. Yeah. He True. Was there. Yeah. Ryder was 4th of July and Tina was like, give me sexy liberty. Give me sexy give me, freedom. Give me, I want you sexy. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> He's like pointing <laughs> down the <laughs> see it. Yeah. Uh, so that's the end of Jarly. Um, well, the storyline. I wish it was the end of the relationship. <laughs> I like, I think it's cute. I think they're cute. I don't know. I think I they're know. trying to appeal to the people that wanted Puck and Rachel today. Um, but they're both significantly better people than Puck and Rachel. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I was like, who wanted who wanted that? Puckleberry was a popular ship. Wow. What? <laughs> One of our guests what? had a I'm Team Puck shirt. I can't remember which guest. Oh, I do remember that, but God, do you remember <laughs> speaking of Twilight when people were like, I'm team whatever? Yeah, Tina. that was like in every single bit of media. Like you just had they to sold, pick a like, side. Team Jacob and Team Edward like merchandise in stores. Not like, even just Twilight, but like even after that, like obviously Glee, and then just there was like five the years games. where you could you just you had to pick a side, no matter what type of media you were consuming, and buy a T-shirt <laughs> <Yep>. about it. <laughs> Somewhere on YouTube, there's a video of me touring the Chicago Art Museum, giving commentary, whispered commentary on art pieces. And there's one of me talking about the Trojan War and how I'm Team Troy on the Trojan War. Wow. <laughs> wow. If any of our listeners find that video, comment. <laughs> it's a hot take. I might go look for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so... We're, so yeah, so let's talk about what feels like a whole different show, mm-hmm. the Rachel stuff. Oh boy. Okay, but real quick, it we does. can agree <laughs> that this calendar, even though they're not like fully nude, is still a version of child pornography that they are distributing. Yeah, I would not want to see a bunch of underage boys posing shirtless. No. It's a weird, it's a weird calendar. I'm trying to see, like, if you, like, put it in, like, context. Like, if I was in high school, like, I'm in Riverview Community High School, (laughs) and my local choir, like, not, (laughs) has decided to put, like, I'm not buying your calendar, you weirdo. (laughs) Would you imagine, like, even if it was, like, the hottest guys at your school, I just feel like I think I would just give you money to go on the bus. Yeah, I would be like, (laughs) don't don't do this. Just here's five (laughs) dollars. Right. Like I wanted a brownie. I wanted yeah. (laughs) Here's my lunch money. Just please get out of my face. Yeah. I I just yeah, there's just like no scenario in which like that would work in a high school. Like unless you're doing like goofy photos, not like your people are shirtless. Like I could maybe understand something like that, but even then it's like, it's kind of weird to have a calendar. I could see in Midwestern high school sexualizing underage boys though. I'm just gonna oh, be yeah. I mean, I could see any school across the country doing that. <laughs> Same thing with girls. Although they probably wouldn't get away with that as much. Rachel Berry in New York. Um, so Kurt is eating his cereal and- uh, Yeah. Brody comes out. Naked. Butt ass naked. And we don't even get Kurt's reaction to the fact that he's their fucking roommate now. Yeah. I, if I was Kurt, I'd be so fucking mad. I'd be so mad. And I would. 
Oh no, wait, not, this is Oh, this is second. I skipped something. Yeah, no, because we did a second. Cause he because the reason he did it was to support Rachel's choice. Yes. Okay. Well, right. At first yes. I was like, okay. when I first saw it, I was like, oh, he's coming out here because he just fucking does that. Like, fine, do that in your own house. We have fucking roommates anyway. Yeah. So Rachel auditions for a student film. And the director is Electra is her name. Um, Bowler hat lady. <laughs> lady. Is she like, in Disney Channel stuff? I don't know. I'm pretty sure she was in like DCOMs, but I want to say like, I'm going to look it up. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she is on the Disney Channel. Bowler hat lady, which, which makes you think of bowler hat guy and meet the Robinson. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's um, what I was going for. She's like... This is, uh, is she, this is, you're going to be playing my grandmother. And she's like, oh, this is about you and your grandmother and Alzheimer's. And she's like, it's an allegory for the end times. So, okay. I just have to say that, yes, there are definitely film students who are like this. And there are a lot of them. But I'm not going to lie. I was pretty offended. I was like, this is, this is really just on the nose. There's a little more nuance here. Um, Did and not enjoy her at all. But it's an allegory. <laughs> it's an allegory. <laughs> I am so triggered by that word. Um, uh, and uh, so she's like, "But you will have to be topless in the ballroom scene with Titus." Um, later Who's we see a this, sailor. He's a we later sailor. See the scene, and it is definitely not a ballroom. Um, and she's like. Okay, I can it's let me. It's an allegory for a ballroom. <laughs> allegory for a ballroom. <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, let me think about it." And then she has a. She sees younger Rachel being like, "Serious actresses don't do topless scenes. Like, that's bad." And then I'm like, "Would a serious actress do Run Joey Run? Checkmate, bitch." Um, oh. <laughs> Yes, the answer is yes. That film was fantastic. Did anyone find like that this was super weird? Like Rachel was having an argument with herself, but a snottier version of herself. Well, so I think there's something interesting here with the like her growing up and trying to figure out boundaries and like who she wants to be. Like there's this interesting like fighting with the child version of herself that she apparently needs to get over it's interesting i don't agree with it but then there are times where like child rachel is what i'm gonna call her i guess teen rachel teen rachel is like outside of the mirror yeah and i was like (laughs) what (laughs) that's not normal uh, yeah, yeah. There was, I don't know. I was like, oh, we get a Rachel storyline. And then there was two Rachels. And I was like, oh, First episode no. It's, it's an allegory. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is. You're right. It literally is. Um, and also, side note, Electra in this episode was the main character from the Disney Channel original movie, Pixel Perfect. Oh. Not oh, the, I haven't seen that. Not the lady ever. that they made, but the lady that was in the band, and she was like, "You just took my ears to make the perfect lady." Do you remember that movie? Danny Gonzalez recently did a video, a YouTube video on that. Because I remember that movie so clearly, and most of what I remember about that movie is all the pictures with like the percentages of like what they wanted to use on different people's bodies. And she's like, "What did you take from like me?" And they're like, "Your ears." And she's <laughs> <laughs> two thousand four. I'm, go I'm gonna go make a film about my grandma. <laughs> this is. With the guy from Phil of the Future. Fun fact, yeah. my uh, roommates and I watched like the first three episodes of Phil of the Future. I'm in love with. And <laughs> the some of the episodes are really jumbled in the beginning because there was one episode that isn't the pilot. It's definitely not the pilot of the story because we're just thrown right in, no introductions. And it's very weird. And then like a couple episodes later is the actual pilot. It's really weird. But then also we watched like the first two episodes of Hannah Montana. Zero out of 10 would not recommend going back and watching the pilots and some of the early episodes of these Disney Channel shows because it hurts your childhood. It hurts right (laughs) right in the heart and the soul. 
Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so she had her ear used. Interesting. This is a 62% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Pixel, Pixel perfect. perfect. Well, okay. I mean, I guess it's above fifty percent, so it's a D. I'm gonna have to go write a Tumblr post. <laughs> <laughs> so incensed. <laughs> um, so they. Uh, so she sings with her former self. She sings "Torn" Love because I'm broken and I'm shamed, lying naked on the floor. Yes. I'm and also she's heart. <laughs> and she's also torn by the decision. Because the first was like, is that really where they went with just because of that line? Then was like, uh, I think maybe the rest of the song kind of helps. <laughs> yeah. Really. It's kind of a jump, but whatever. Yeah, it's kind of a stretch there. Kind of, I was like, okay. I tried yeah. because I'm like, oh, I like this song and like it sounds good. And then I was like, I don't know if it super fits. And then, so apparently that song just happened in real time because then Electra comes over and is like, have you made your decision yet? And she's like, yes, I have. Uh, I'll do yes. it. <laughs> and so then we get Brody walking in naked and Kurt is all like, ugh. And then he's like, your naked, your boyfriend's naked butt is on one of my vintage flea market chairs. And he's like, I'm confident in my body and I want to support Rachel's choice. That has nothing to do with it. You need to respect his chairs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the other thing, though, is that, like, that's not super why she is hesitant. It doesn't really have a lot to do with, like, her self-image as much as it has to do with what it means to go topless and how that could affect how people perceive her so which is interesting point, yeah but his point is moot it's not about her being confident in her body right it's not the nudity really it's yeah it's like how are people going to perceive me how could this affect my career because that's the thing is like she's like will this benefit my career like i would have this starring role but in a student film yeah i can't wait for quintana because <laughs> I, I was them. so confused by the storyline. I had no idea where we were supposed to be going or what we were talking about. I was like, are we talking about body positivity? Because that's what the right. calendar was talking about. Or are we talking about like perceptions? And I don't understand. I, I talking don't about really get naked. <laughs> that's, there's all the different types of naked you can have. That's what they're talking about. You know? uh, it was so <laughs> unclear. All of it naked was unclear. Emo emotional nakedness. Yeah. Physical nakedness. <laughs> Literal nakedness. <laughs> and then I guess the other one would be partial nudity. <laughs> partial nudity. <laughs> three types of nakedness. Um, the three genders. <laughs> 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 I am naked emotionally. Tag yourself. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Biden when asked how many genders there are. At least three. <laughs> At least. <laughs> At least. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that, that sounds a lot spookier <laughs> than, than I thought. I like, yeah, I was like, oh God, there's genders anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, Rachel, uh, so Kurt is all like, last year you're all plaid skirts and just been like me. And this year your slutty boyfriend asking misogynistic Ken to move in with you. Or slutty Barbie asking misogynistic yeah. Ken to move in with you. And because he's all like, you have, if, if you want to win an Oscar, you have to show your boobs. Um, <laughs> and just wait. Kathy Bates in that list too. I was like, did Brody say that? Brody said that, yeah. 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 And I'm like, my immediate thought was, did Anne Hathaway show her boobs in Les Mis? She just shaved her head. <sighs> did she? I don't think oh. she. No. 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 I don't think she got topless. No. I also she got naked emotionally. Rachel's self awareness on her hair after the song. <laughs> oh, because that she, young Rachel's it's like, like you have to control. admit your hair's out that of control. I think it's like a nice blowout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So okay, so it's rich coming from Kurt saying that like, what's his name is being misogynistic when he literally calls her slutty Barbie, and it's like, listen, she's trying out some style. She's figuring out who she is. Yeah, I didn't, live. I didn't right. like Kurt's reaction to her decision. 
No. Yeah, at no. All. It was horrible. He definitely oversteps his place as friend. Right. Right. I You're feel not, like this was roommate issues presenting themselves mm. as like <laughs> what is immediately happening. That's that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. I bet you Glee did not have that in mind because they're not that smart, but that's a really good point. Well, um, literally any sane roommate on having someone's significant other move in without their permission would find a way After they've been to dating be for like three weeks. <laughs> would find a way to be pissed. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kurt's probably just like, you know what? I can save myself like $500 a month. I'll just live with this. I'm not going to throw a fit but I'm going to be mad at everything else. <laughs> um, but you yeah. are a slut and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, he literally, and, and she's like, well, I'm growing up, Kurt. Maybe you should try it. But I'm like, it's not necessarily just about like you're growing up because the way she says it makes me think that, like she thinks getting nude means she's going to be more of an adult, which could be her thinking, but also she's growing up and figuring out her boundaries and what she's comfortable with, but that's not really how it comes off. I don't know. This is a very dicey conversation that wasn't. Well, I think you still see like, and that's part of it. Like is like Rachel's immaturity. Yeah. In, and then his immaturity in his reaction to her kind of like, they're not really, neither of them are being adults (laughs) make an adult decision on what you want to do with the film. And then like, to be like, like rock on like like do what you gotta do (laughs) and then rachel leaves and then brody is just there naked and kurt is just more and more putting everything in front of his line of vision to brody's genitals like that's what happens because he keeps like moving he moves like the milk (laughs) everything and it's i didn't even notice that i did yeah i did because (laughs) i'm like this is just really just because it's not just his naked butt touching those flea market chairs. No, it's everything. Yeah. But if he's Ken, then he doesn't have genitals. That is true. <laughs> and I guess neither does Rachel. And that's no, how I Kurt sees be them as non, well, I was non-sexual like, can beings. Can you even be a slutty Barbie? Because you don't have genitals. You can't now, that's oh. now that's interesting. Now that's interesting. Insert John Mulaney. That's his own American gender right there. <laughs> <laughs> now that's very interesting. And I mean, I would say like you can do stuff with your mouth, but like if there's no genitals on the Ken doll, you're just making out a lot. That's not slutty. Slutty is... I mean, term anyway. let's be honest in high school in high school there was like a girl who i thought oh she's slutty but i did not think she was having sex but no. that does just she was mashing to, her food hole what? another food hole <laughs> that refers to the sheltered little bubble that i grew up in where someone was considered slutty without even having sex <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. that's you know problematic the sex in the midwest is very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This, um. this, yeah, this conversation about slutty Barbies and whether they can exist has <laughs> kind of fucked me up. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I guess if you're like a 12 year old Cullen, then yes, you could be a slutty Barbie. <laughs> you would think that then. Uh, uh, but- so, uh, Rachel comes back into the apartment. She's like talking to Kurt. She's like, Kurt, the downstairs neighbor with a mustache wants to know if she can borrow your Russian uh, winter hat. Um, and that's, then that's a weird thing to bar- let someone borrow. Like, you're going to let that woman keep it. Yeah. <laughs> and then she walks in and she's like, oh my gosh, Quinn and Santana. Quintana. And they're like, oh my gosh, why are you here? And they're like, Lady Hummel called us. Um, he, they said you were doing a nude scene in a movie, and she's like, "It's just topless." And Santana's like, "That's as nude as anyone wants to see you." And and, like, Good to see you too, Santana. <laughs> Love and, ya. And they're like, "We're also here to shop." And Quinn's like, "And to apologize for slapping Quinn across the face very, very hard." And Santana's like, "We'll see if that happens." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Maybe." <laughs> I mean, they should have ironed that out before Rachel got there. Yeah. How did they get into the apartment? Maybe Kurt left them in. Arguing in the apartment. 
prior to Rachel. I'm convinced that their door doesn't have a lock. It's just a sliding <laughs> it's like barn the- door. <laughs> it's, yeah, like there's no lock. Uh, so it's Bushwick. I don't know anything about. <laughs> um, so then they're like, "Don't do it." Um, and then we get a scene later with them sitting down, and uh, they're like, "Think of the two, two, two rule. What do you think about it in two days?" And Brittany's like, or not Brittany, Rachel is like, "I'll feel good." And Tina's like, "Yeah, you'll get some air on those scooter bites." <laughs> Uh, yeah it was what two weeks two months and two years yeah and then in two months maybe you won't feel as good and then in two years she's like i guess i'll feel nervous that my kids will see it i was like wow you plan to have kids in two years that's what i thought or maybe she's just thinking like two years from now okay she's older and then she's gonna be like oh my god when i go to have kids they're gonna see it it yeah. could go either way but yeah, I okay. actually thought it was that one too I was like geez I didn't realize 23 did. was she gonna was, be when she was gonna have kids she was originally planning to get married in high school so I guess like <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's true and so um, they're like oh they'll yeah. see it and they'll never be the same and she's like who are you to judge you had a sex tape leak leak and Santana's like yeah I did but look at my gonna- name right now <laughs> And it's like Santana, Les, Boobies, Dominican or Puerto Rican, question yeah, mark. Like- <laughs> oh. And she's like, yep, booyah, that's going to follow me around forever. It's also an under, I guess they were 18 when they did it. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Now that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when they made the sex tape. I wasn't there, wasn't invited. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Liter- it could be literal child pornography. But uh, yeah, as Gwyneth Paltrow told Puck and Lauren Zizes when they were going to make a sex tape. You know, yeah. Mm. I feel like there's a lot of like single-mindedness in glee and it has to do with child pornography it's hilarious isn't it (laughs) that's what glee thinks it is it's super funny it's like they haven't quite reconciled the idea that teenagers yes do have sex and have sex lives and sexual thoughts but the fact that they are not quite adults um and I think that's a conversation that's a little more people kind of understand it a little more now. Yeah. And it's definitely, I mean, I can imagine that it's super difficult to be able to realistically talk about those things in a show without it being like, oh, this is weird. Like I'm listening to these who should be children talk about how they have like sexual thoughts. So it's, yeah, I get the challenge for sure. uh, is the difference between sexuality and sexualization yeah yes glee not figured that out no yeah i mean (laughs) this was the same time as secret life of the american teenager the worst teen drama of a pretty weird genre like it's a weird genre but secret life this secret life of the american teenager is the definitive worst of the genre um, yeah, I was like, my parents <laughs> let me watch Glee, but it was definitely not American. Like, like there was <laughs> def- so weird. Because, like, looking back, you're like, yeah, they're not that different. <laughs> <laughs> but that show does have the line, my dad died a horrible death because I had incredible sex, which is a crime. <laughs> which... <laughs> <laughs> oh what i need to watch this show what <laughs> i knew about that from joel McHale's the soup <laughs> they like a recap Classic. of a line um that's yeah, yeah. no that was wow. that was like a storyline i think on the show like that she truly thought that <laughs> I have to watch this show. It sounds bananas. Okay. I remember I remember everyone was super into it when I was in high school and I was just like, I don't have any interest. All I really remember there was one, the lady, the girl who got pregnant was like, I don't know. And then she's like, I'm a whore. And then the guy was like, but you're my whore. <laughs> oh. 
I have to watch this show. I'm about to binge it right now. Let's and wrap love this up. yourself. Don't. <laughs> I don't have any self-respect. I watch Glee every okay. week. Right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So kind of to go back to what they're saying, the 222 rule, basically like thinking like, okay, how will you really feel about this? And has anyone ever heard of this rule no. before this no. episode? But I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that's like bad advice. Yeah, no, I, was I actually, actually was like, like, oh, this is an interesting way to make decisions. That's what I thought. I was like, huh, this is actually pretty wise. And and what I think is really good about this conversation as opposed to what happened with Kurt is Kurt was like, no, like you're not being you or you're going to be slutty or whatever but santana was like listen i made a mistake and now it's haunting me and basically they came down on is that like not that they don't want her to do it at all or ever it's kind of that like they don't want her to do it for a student film like yeah, maybe she, save that for something that's like oscar worthy yeah because they're like it's a student film and she's she's like what if it's good and satana's like oh no like, it will be bad it's because yeah. it's probably about the director's <laughs> grandmother and alzheimer's and rachel's like <laughs> <laughs> hilarious yeah so i mean As someone that's who really... has made student films i can tell you they're yeah. not always that good <laughs> I yeah I really just like I thought this conversation was way more constructive and like from just the media perspective of like list hearing that as you know possible teenager I think it was really good that they're not like no we don't want you to express your sexuality it's like maybe don't do this for a student film like for your very first project you know like maybe you don't have to do that you know what if you could regret it that kind of thing so I thought this was a very constructive conversation. Yeah, it comes from a place of actual, like, care, whereas I think Kurt just, like, automatically goes into, like, a place of, like, judgment, you know, where it's just, like... Yeah, I think Alyssa's right. He's pissed that Brody moved. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hates the roommates. <laughs> sure he's yep. never been but he's saving, like, five or six hundred dollars a month, so... And I accidentally watched, like, the first minute of the next episode and this presents itself again wow i can't believe you got all that from just watching like a minute of it that's crazy it's gonna be an action-packed episode so fun can't wait for next week guys um so then uh Rachel is on the set and the in a not ballroom. In a the not allegory ballroom, of a ballroom. <laughs> now we're in ruins. And she's like, You see, Titus, you're overcome with lust. There's Drop smoke. the robe. There's yeah, there's like mist effect. There's someone on the piano playing the music, which I'm like, that's not how film scores work. Right. Um, Didn't they call it a dreamscape? Well, it yeah. also doesn't make any sense because the director is telling her how to like act out the scene. And I'm like, you how's that sound gonna work yeah Yeah. and that's what i'm like because i was like oh maybe they're not rolling sound maybe they're just like gonna use the visual whatever uh no there's a guy rolling sound literally like two minutes later i'm like okay nope nothing doesn't make sense like right next to you (laughs) yeah and then she's like drop the robe and rachel's like i don't know i'm just not she says cut (laughs) she says cut she's like i'm the only one allowed to say cut actually as soon as rachel said cut i was like oh no that was a mistake yeah (laughs) Um, and, uh, she's like, maybe I'd feel more comfortable if everyone took their clothes off. Which, you know, is an idea. I could see that. Yeah, she's yeah, like, there's was, so many people down. here. They all, they were like, yup, great. Like, let's do it. Like, it's hot as balls in here with all these it lights. Was actually, it was pretty funny because they were all just like, yep, all right, everyone take your shirts off. And well, yeah, no because one had a problem with it. She starts with like, my DP sculpts with light. Are you going to tell him that you don't want to be sculpted or something like that? And <coughs> she's like, maybe take my, everyone should take their clothes off. And the, the guy was the first one to do it. I think it was him because- Yeah, I think was it was the DP, was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, sure, great. And just 
<laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... So now she's surrounded by 20 men with their shirts off. Yeah. Casually. I don't. It, it was and also. It was interesting because there literally was no. There were no women. In, yeah, in the that was crew. That all. was interesting. Um, also, I think that like it was kind of refreshing to be like seeing like other types of bodies yeah. rather than just like the hot guys that we were seeing earlier. Mm-hmm. It was like refreshing. It was like, oh, cool, normal people. Yeah, and they were all perfectly cool with it. They were like definitely okay mm-hmm. in their own skin. Also, now that I think about it, since there was no women, I can imagine just like. Like, only the director was there. But, like, how stressful that would be mm-hmm. to be, like, you're the, you're going to get topless in front of these dudes. Like, yeah, they're being professional or whatever, but, like, it could still be pretty uncomfortable if there's, like, no other women and the director clearly doesn't want to advocate for your comfort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then they're doing the scene again and she's, like, drop the robe. And Rachel's, like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And Electra's, like, you said you could. And then she's, like... I, I was being honest when I said yes, but I'm being honest now. I'm not ready yet. Um, and I thought that was a good way to phrase it. Yeah. Right. You you weren't lying. She wasn't lying when she's, you know, she wasn't mm-hmm. trying to just kind of, yeah. When it and, yeah. And so she's like, well, get that. I hell off my grandmother's dreamscape. <laughs> I guess I have to be grandma. And... Uh, Rachel walks away and she starts singing Sarah Bareilles' love song. And, okay, so where do they end up? Because all of a sudden they're on a stage and I'm like, this isn't Ohio. This is the auditorium where the Adam's Apples sang I Like Big Butts. So Santana and Quinn are just on Miata's campus because they can. Yeah, that's where they went. Yeah. Uh (laughs) Cool, cool, cool. cool. To follow up on their conversation (laughs) earlier. I actually kind of wish they had gone to the shoot. Like, if they were on campus, like, why couldn't Rachel be like, hey, like, can I have my friends from all support? You know, that would I can imagine that director saying, um, no, they're not qualified to be on my set. Yeah, she probably would. But I kind of feel like that would have been interesting to like, to, but I guess then it wouldn't necessarily be Rachel coming to that decision on her own because Quinn and Santana would just be there like being like, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Santana giving her the middle finger <laughs> the whole time. So they sang love song, um, including the parts that are usually cut from the radio edit which are like the bridge and stuff. Um, and then- The radio edit, really? Yeah, because I remember when I first heard the Glee cover, I was like, what is this part? I don't ever listen to the radio, so interesting. I mean, I definitely did when Love Song was playing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, does this song make sense? Well, the song is Sarah Barella saying, I'm not going to write you a love song because they were always asking her to write a love song. She was like- I'm not, you're not going to force me to write a love song. Um, and so it kind of makes sense because, like, you're not going to force me to do this. Right. I, this one, I feel like, fits less with the story than Torn does. Yeah. I don't think it really makes sense in the context of this. I mean, line. I think it makes enough sense for Glee. Glee's connections are yeah. pretty tenuous yeah. Drink. Yeah. we said tenuous <laughs> yeah uh, and then rich is like as my dad's always say you can't make new old friends let's go to dinner and santana's like i really like new york it's more my speed for sure we all knew yeah we knew that your mom gave you a ton of money and then don't know what you did with it so uh yeah that's that's the episode um (laughs) how do we feel how do we feel about ourselves Uh, okay i'm gonna stretch recoup we did it (laughs) i'm still confused i mean yeah 
<laughs> maybe I'm just projecting my own confusion from like my own body image issues because everyone has them, but I still don't know what this episode was trying to tell me. That's kind of, that's interesting. I don't think he was trying to tell us anything. Honestly, I kind of just feel like they were like, we have run out of ideas. <laughs> Let's just throw all of them in this episode. Let's go back to body image issues. Yeah, every, yeah. All, the audiences love that concept. <sighs> the, yeah, the network was like, uh, you need to fill your quota of um, social justice issue storylines. Uh, so we're going to need you to bring up a high school nudie calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan that, was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm dead <laughs> So that brings us to Tina time. Tina time. Okay, I tried to count, but I have no idea if I'm even close. I eight? Eight? That sounds right, yeah. Okay. Nice. I counted correctly this time. Yeah, eight one of lines. them was talking about Blaine's butt. Yep. <laughs> and sexy liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Give me what did she say? I want you sexy. <laughs> um yeah so okay um let's talk about our mvps and lvps emily who is your least valuable player my least valuable player kurt this time kurt kurt was kind of just being a a d-bag Mm-hmm. just kind of i mean like and he wasn't even in it a lot but it was kind of just like a purveying thing where you're like oh god <laughs> <laughs> um yeah special shout out for kurt um i wrote tina because her it was her idea to do like the sexual sexualized <laughs> calendar and she partially did it because she's in love with Blaine. She's thirsty. Or I should say she has a crush on Blaine. And she literally was like, yeah, because Blaine's looking like especially taut these days and stuff like that. So like she came up with a really bad idea. Honestly, I wish they had just gone back to the bake sale and put weed in the brownies. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go with Brody because even though I hate the way that Kurt was like putting Rachel down, I really feel for him in the fact that Brody is the living show. there. Yeah. yeah. I I was just like, Brody, like have you guys had like really bad roommate like issues before? <laughs> <laughs> Like from like a bad place. I lived no, alone. No, no. Like, I, I, I was a lot. Like I don't. I mean, you have I with other with people. Yes, I have with other people. I also know people who have gone through bad roommate okay. situations. Okay. Um. So yes, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so I was just sort of like Brody. If you're even like a decent human being. And your girlfriend invites you to live with her, but you know she has a roommate. You really have to like step up and take responsibility for yourself and say like, yeah, I don't think this is a good idea. Have you talked to your roommate yet? Like, he's also you're an adult too. person. Yeah. yeah, like you have to like take responsibility for your own actions. I'm not gonna put this all on Rachel. Plus the fact that he was sitting on cursed chairs oh I can't yeah like that is not his furniture like no. whatever walk around naked but don't sit on the furniture mm. <laughs> I like these boundaries I like these lines being drawn <laughs> like walk around naked like put your junk behind my milk don't sit on the floor <laughs> put your junk behind my milk <laughs> that's, that's on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going with Kurt too for the slutty Barbie comment. 
Yeah. I think he just needs to think about Barbies a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the eight to 12 minutes that we thought about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will still be thinking about it after this episode. So we'll carry it with us into the day. Um, so Emily, who is your favorite character? Huh, who did? I mean, I liked Quintana. I thought that was actually like one of the more like rounded conversations to have with a friend. So I feel like sometimes in this show, like people don't, I don't know, talk to their friends like actual friends. Yes. <laughs> So like, I I thought it was like really nice for them to be like, Hey, like we're here. Like, let's just like, think about it. Let's like, like, let's like vocalize what you're doing. And then like, you can ultimately make your own choice. We're just kind of presenting you with a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going with Quintana for all of those reasons. It was just it's weird because sometimes Glee will have these really mature, well-rounded conversations about dicey topics. And you're like, shit. Okay. And then a lot of times they're like, no, no, we're not going to do that. So this was one of those good times. Yes. It was like a, yeah, a nice. (laughs) Um, I'm actually going with Blaine because he made that super cheesy video for Sam, but Sam obviously like really, loved it and it went it it helped bolster his image of himself and helped him realize that he's more than just his body so i think blaine did some good yes no i a lot to sam so i actually i think that blaine probably did it just out of the goodness of his heart and because he's sam's friend but i also wonder if he also kind of did it because of the crush thing too. Oh. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, he probably really enjoyed that hug they had. <laughs> Slutty Barbies. <laughs> Slutty Barbies. <laughs> I'm going with Blaine too. I thought he was being a good friend and like in a way that's so rare for Glee where they're like, oh, you're having this issue. I wanna go to actual proper sources to get you help. I'm not just going to sing about it. I'm going to get you help and help you concretely and like work towards yeah, a goal. He Blaine did didn't have a sing photo at him. That actually is like, <laughs> you're really. Yeah, Blaine didn't sing oh. at him. They didn't sing a song about their body issues at all. He did not sing Pretty Hurts by Beyonce. Um, was it which, out? I think it was out. Twenty. Well, yeah, I think it was 2013. Yeah. Um, he did not sing what would later be called Sit Still, Look Pretty. He did not sing uh, <laughs> the Alyssa Kara songs uh, about beauty standards. He did not sing Kelly Clarkson's You're Unbroken and It's Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> he went to a counselor and he was like, we're going to get Sam some help for college because this is really about him worried about his future. Yeah. And he's just exerting it in a different unhealthy way that he might need some therapy for. So they slipped in a therapist card there. Too. Yes. <laughs> it's my head cannon. <laughs> um, I, I really like, I thought Sam's journey was very realistic for his character and resolving some issues that he's had uh, since Will gave him them. In- Does Brittany's SAT score come up again? No, not yet. <laughs> So (laughs) then the the other thing is okay so they went to emma to help him with the school stuff but we still have no idea where he's living and no one seems to mention that like hey you could use a place to stay so either they forgot and they don't care or he's okay yeah, is the show, I feel like the show just honestly forgot. Like, <laughs> yes. And we're just not letting them forget if they ever listen to this podcast, which they never will. <laughs> It'll just be us reminding them. You forgot about Sam's living Even situation. after this is over, I may get my own Twitter and just tweet at Ryan Murphy <laughs> constantly. Like, where is Sam living? <laughs> Where did he live? And then Ryan Murphy's going to be like, I don't know. I was working on the 80th <laughs> season of American Horror Story when this was written. 
And I, I do want to give a shout out to Finn for being accepting of Artie's uh, insecurities and like for just being a better teacher. Finn is already just such a better teacher than Mr. Shu and how he handles things. Yes. But I'm not going to give him the MVP because he did <laughs> pedal an underage boy <laughs> nudie calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Bit. It's fine. I think... Also, I think there is something to the fact that like Finn kept pushing, but he was like trying to figure it out as if he just like didn't understand where it was coming from. But I kind of feel like if a student comes to you and is like, I'm not comfortable with doing this, this thing that is literally like showing your body, like, I don't know. I feel like he should have just taken right that away. and been like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of pushing like, oh, well, we could do this. We could do that. And or he's like, no, you're not understanding. I just don't want to do this. On like a weird other side note, I was thinking about it that it's like not a crazy amount of money that they needed. <laughs> like you went to like a really far extent, like with a lot of production value to like print all of these calendars. Like how yeah. much did that cost you? <laughs> all, the, all the camera equipment. equipment. Yeah, no, they're like, they're definitely in the twenty bed. people in your group. Like, just be like, hey, like, ask your parents for twenty dollars. <laughs> Wait, yeah. how many people are in the group? I can't. I can never really pin that down because a lot of like people join the 11, number. Eleven, eleven people. Well, I think they need twelve. Um, but Sugar was conveniently absent this episode because sometimes she just gives money. them money. Even if you had twelve people, that's Even, thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if. <laughs> Give me if, $33. If literally, you just asked your parents for, for like $50. $50. You'd have an extra hundred to spend for on. Me the bus? I don't yeah. Know. Like, it's literally that simple. <laughs> it's fine. I think they lost a lot of money printing the calendars, but that's just. They're definitely fine. in the red. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a way more interesting storyline anyway, because then Sam wouldn't be able to ask his parents. Like, yeah. And then we has- find out where the living yes yeah. you'd be like hey um i live in your basement i don't know, if you know this still <laughs> like, but... my dad to mail me to an address i have a p.o box in, in ohio um once i get my 40 dollars yeah it's like i am technically homeless and I my parents are poor in- and live in a kitchen <laughs> in kentucky <laughs> Honestly, well, he was at one point living with Finn and his family. So I guess he's still living in Finn's house. Yeah. So well, he could. What? <laughs> you don't think Maybe Finn's he mo- moved in with Kurt and Finn at the same time? He could be literally just like living in Kurt's old bedroom. Yeah. yeah. We just want to dressed. This is way no, I think it is also just like a better storyline. Like, hey, um, everyone needs to ask their parents. And then it's like, okay, some people can do it. And then it could be interesting if like we see like two or three kids who can't, and then their storyline is like learning more about them, their backstory. Yeah. Yeah. And their family oh life. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that would have been way way more impactful that like hey you can't always just ask children to ask their parents for money for stupid school stuff not stupid school school stuff yeah yeah (laughs) i mean i'm calling it stupid because it's it's the show glee but (laughs) yeah so like i feel like that would be interesting Mm -hmm. like also like marley like she wouldn't be able to ask her mom, like, we literally need that money because I have an eating disorder and I have to go to therapy. Because like, of I Kitty. Can't... Because of one of the people that's in this club still. Why is she still fucking here? Yeah, someone that I still hang out with socially. <laughs> yeah, who says that she's my friend but still is going to gaslight me. Uh, anyway. Songs. That's the Glee Boot. That's the Glee Boot. For songs, that actually is a really good idea for the Glee Boot, an episode about mm-hmm. kids having to ask their parents for money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so for songs we have um it's getting a hot in here, so check up all your clothes slash center. We already know that's Aaron's favorite. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> Very on brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's too on brand. <laughs> um we have a thousand years, we have torn, we have let me love you. 
and we have uh, Love Song. Yeah. So, Emily, what was your least favorite song? Wait, what was the last song they do in the episode? Oh, we don't even have to talk about this. Because oh, it was so yeah. tangential. They do it a was song. meta. And I literally, uh, Blaine was looking at the camera. It was like black and white. I was like, absolutely oh not. Gosh. I fast forwarded. I totally I forgot that. about this. <laughs> He sang, uh, let me look up, it's called like New Year's. Oh, Something. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, oh yeah, New Year, New Me. I'm like, that's not what this episode was about. Because that it's was the second funny. episode in the New Year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's my least favorite because I totally forgot about it. It was even at the very end and I must have just like. It made no sense in any sort of context. Yeah. This episode was written by Ryan Murphy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, probably that one. And I also really did not like how Jake sang Neo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't listen to Jake singing Neo. Um, so I'm just going to go give a shout out for that because I'm sure I wouldn't have liked it. Um, but don't get me wrong. I think this guy is a really good actor. I just do not care for his voice. Um, just want to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, worst, don't like the hot in here mashup. Because also they ruined the J. Jill's band centerfold song, which is very inappropriate, but it's kind of a banger. Uh, but they're like talking because they're like kind of like trying to wrap it so that it kind of fit, but it doesn't fit. And I hate it. <laughs> it's called, it says re-energized with the success of the calendar. New Direction celebrates performing This Is The New Year by... Great big world. Yeah, I'm Sorry, going, great big world, but I'm going with this is the new year. Because we literally just forgot yes, really <laughs> about it. Uh, it was not good. It was and like black I've and white. I've never even heard that song before. And I was like, what? I don't know. This is weird. Okay. I'm going to go with that one too because I didn't like them seeing at the camera. I like how they're like pairing little groups and doing their little duets and like running around. So, like, I liked it in theory but I hated it in reality, whereas... <laughs> uh, it also I, didn't make sense because, like, they're performing together. Why is there, like, a meta breaking the the fourth wall thing here? It doesn't make any sense. Whereas Centerfold Hot in here, I hated it in the theory, but I kind of enjoyed it in practice because it's, like, it was, like, a twist. Like, you don't usually see them do, like, a workout musical number, so... Okay, I thought you were going to be like, because it also slaps. And I was going to be like, Helen, don't you dare say that. <laughs> so, Emily, what was your favorite song? I think I liked Torn. I, maybe it's just because I really like the song and I like her singing that I just like, I didn't like the visual of it, like watching it with like the two mirrors <laughs> and then not in the mirror <laughs> was like yeah. unsettling. Um, that was some us the shit right there. The music itself <laughs> was good. So my favorite dubstep song <laughs> shout yeah. out to vine <laughs> um <laughs> my favorite um i wrote torn or love song um yeah i'm going with torn because i really love that song uh classic leah michelle squint singing was back i was here for it but love song is also really good because the harmonies are really nice um and like Queen Rachel and Santana, I don't think we often hear them sing together on the show, like even in the past. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it's both of those. I, okay, hot take. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I really liked Let Me Love You. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's a good song. It, I, it's, it's a decent song. cover. Not, um, it's not a bad song. No. It, yeah. And I, I liked the Jake and Marley storyline because I thought it was cute. And so when he was singing to her and like, I don't know, I just thought it was cute. And he wasn't belting the whole time. So his voice wasn't as nasally. Right. Maybe I'll go back and listen to it. I'm going <laughs> to go, <laughs> she says, it's, that's a lie. Um <laughs> I'm going to go with Love Song. I, because I just like that song. It's the only one in this episode that's on my Glee playlist. Um, but a shout out to A Thousand Years because I thought that was nice. Yeah. 
actually, I have to say, um, Jake's voice in that wasn't too bad, but I was also focusing a lot more on uh, Marley. Yeah. I was a shout out for me to love song because I was singing along to that one the whole time until me too. I choked on my <laughs> drink. <laughs> I was looking for my headphones and like going around my room and I was singing along because yeah. So yeah, that brings us to the end of Naked. Um <sighs> I Emily. feel very naked emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very topless. <laughs> the people listening to the podcast, they can think that I was topless the whole time. <laughs> she took she took her assignment very seriously. Yeah, yeah. She's like, my hair is covering. <laughs> like a mermaid. <laughs> uh, so Emily, where can people find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm the Irish Chaldean on Instagram because that's, I'm Irish by blood, Chaldean by marriage. (laughs) And that's a very rare combo for anybody. (laughs) Uh, Cool. I'm on TikTok at the same thing, but I don't make them. I'm too scared. (laughs) I'm an observer. (laughs) Um, so you can find Glee Boot on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We are at Glee Boot Pod. You can also find us on Tumblr, gleebootpod.tumblr.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at a.m.swearingen. Such a banger. <laughs> yeah, that slaps. <laughs> slaps. <laughs> You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at your boy Ryan 99 and YouTube at your boy Ryan. Like Aaron, my channel is, I've been, I haven't uploaded a video in over a year, but it's there. Correct. <laughs> Listen, we had a pandemic. You're fine. <laughs> and we're still producing podcasts. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So tune in next week for an episode called Diva. We'll see what that's about. Um, Emily, thank you again for your seasonal check-in with us. We'll yes, have you on next fun. season. You're truly an all-star. You're a Glee we're Boot all-star. I was like, I, we, we're kind of approaching the end in seasons, huh? Yeah, we have two yeah, more seasons after this. Mm-hmm. So you'll have to, yeah, like you'll have to clue me in for the end. <laughs> I want for the finale episode to have like a bunch of guests come back because that's basically what Glee does is just like have everyone come back. There you go. And we'll record like a bunch of different people on just like segments of the episode maybe. Yeah. That could be interesting. We'll have to find a way to do it. I think that'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. Yay. Till next week, guys. Bye. 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 Glee